welcome to another cage demo from fibcages.com. Today I'm going to show you something a little bit different. This is a repositioning gauge. Uh, it enables you to move your aircraft anywhere you like on the globe um, and this gauge is designed specifically for FSX and Prepare 3D. So let's start now. Down the left hand side we have the S buttons and on this gauge every single button is being used. So we'll start off with the S1 and we have a picture here of the globe and that is basically a toggle between the um, globe view and if you click here it gives you a zoom in view of where you're currently located. And we'll nip back out to globe for now. The S2 button activates and deactivates the lock. Now when the padlock is colored it basically means that your gauge is fixed to the position of the aircraft. So if I now move the location pointers the aircraft will follow every movement I make and we'll do a quick example. I'm just going to quickly move across here and you can see that it's following me and it's go across Europe. It takes a while for the scenery to catch up um, because I'm doing it in real time. So now we've locked the uh, gauge to the aircraft, the aircraft moves immediately. Now it's, it's okay if you've got a fast machine, um, it can be a problem if um, your machine's a little bit slower. Um, the scenery does take a little while to catch up, but probably no longer than it would have if you had just gone into the map and, um, and just selected your location and then it forced it to wait the load time. So as you can see, the scenery is loading now and it's moved me to the new location because I I was locked. Now if I unlock and move the pointer I can now freely move the gauge position to anywhere I like. Let's stick it straight in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Okay and you can see the position of the aircraft it hasn't moved it's still here and I've now moved the wanted position into uh, to the center of Africa. Now the next buttons we have S3 and S4. These actually move the aircraft to the pointer or the pointer to the aircraft. So here we've got we're moving the pointer on top of the aircraft. Here we've got move the aircraft on top of the pointer. So if I want to move the aircraft to um, Africa right now, I just hit the S4 key and the aircraft immediately goes to that point. Now if I once again move the pointer, let's go to South America. Brazil is about there somewhere, forgive my geography. Now if I was to hit this button here, that will basically move the pointer to the aircraft. So the aircraft is currently here in Africa. I will click this button and the pointer will go back to the aircraft position. So this just enables us to um, move the pointer around and not have to worry too much about the airplane trying to keep up with where I'm moving the pointer to. And once you've decided where you want to go, let's come down to here, a nice little island, and we'll just tell the aircraft to go there. Okay, and the button here with the S5 is a rotation that enables you to change the slew direction of the aircraft. So if we click this button, that just enables the turning slew mode. And now we turn the dial and the aircraft will slow. And you can see it's turning in real time as well. Now to stop it, you just hit S5 again. Let's turn it back the other way. You can move it in either direction. And once you're happy in the direction you want to, to face, you can just hit S5 to stop. Now the S6 is the play button and that turns the slew mode off and forces your airplane to start flying. Now, because I don't know where you're going to be height-wise, what I've done is at the point of hitting play, I at that point take a reading of the height of the ground and then I add 3,000 feet to it. So you're not going to start inside a mountain. So if we hit the play button, you'll see that the aircraft goes 3,000 feet and we're off um, at that position. Now if we lock again with the S2 and we move, you can see the scenery is, is moving with probably not a good idea to go somewhere where it's currently night. Let's move it back over here. So we've got something to see. So as you can see, the airplane moves in real time while locked. Now, once again, if we unlock that, 
I'm able to move my position pointer and select where I want to go. So let's go to Australia. And we'll just drop it straight there, move the plane to the pointer. And as you can see, it's very, very dark and I'm probably in the middle of a Australian uh, desert somewhere. So let's move it back somewhere more useful. Let's take it back to England. Now this is where the zoom mode is very useful. And let's send the plane here and then zoom in. Now I can now fine tune this. Let's go to London and then move the plane there. What heading am I? I'm heading north. to do. Now once again if I leave it unlocked and I move the pointers it's not moving the aircraft and if I hit the lock and now move it's locked to the airplane and the airplane will follow the cursors again. So let's just give it a bit of a spin so you can see the coastline. Oh, the other way. I will stop the spin. Now, say so if we take the lock off and we move up and down, nothing happens. We, we lock it, and now when I move, you can see the land disappearing and coming back. Okay, now while we're in this mode, where we're locked on the map, now as we're flying around, because the map's quite small, you're not going to see much movement on the airplane. You will see the plane spin, so you'll know which heading you're at. But uh, unless you're flying at Mark 3, you're not really going to notice the map moving. Um, but the map does move, and um, you can have the option of displaying the airplane or not. So taking the airplane off gives you the ability to fine tune. So if I wanted to go. Let's move a bit faster. Let's go to the southern tip of Italy. In fact, let's go over to Greece, a little island there that I'm familiar with. Now, you can see by the small point in the center, you've got a much more accurate guide as to where the landscape is. We move the plane there. And we'll real time it. For the scenery to catch up, and you can see the the position pointer on the map is fairly accurate. These maps were basically extracted from Flight Simulator, um, so that they're an accurate representation. I did experiment with um, a map off the internet, but um, the coastlines didn't match up. So this is pretty accurate. So if you want to move. to the tip of this here you can see as that gets to the point of the edge there you go so it's pretty accurate so that's this as well so we've got color you can change the sea color while we're in lock mode in the zoom map you can change the sea color there's four different gradients to play around with and once again you can and slow the aircraft. You can use the left or the right button to slow, but you just have to activate the slow um, heading slow with the uh, heading button. And so, if you want to redisplay the airplane in the middle, you can toggle that on and off here as well. And once again, you've got the play option, so you can carry on flying at this point. Okay, so that pretty much covers the map. I don't think there's anything else I need to cover in here. No fancy menus built into this gauge. Um, it's all down the sidebars anyway. I mean, we do have some text here. So currently I'm locked and I'm showing the current latitude and longitude of my aircraft. If I'm unlocked, you'll see that I have um, different features here. Because I'm currently flying, it will show the current ground above feet, which is zero because I'm over water, um, and the current altitude of the aircraft. If I pause it for a sec, now you'll notice that there's a latitude and longitude at the top and latitude and longitude at the bottom. 
now because I'm not locked this will show you the longitude and latitude of my pointer and the longitude and latitude of the plane to the pointer at the top the plane at the bottom and if I move the plane here then they should both match and when I go into flight mode that point of latitude longitude is replaced with the ground height and the current altitude as well and as you can see a little bit clearer on this map you've got the ground height and the altitude and when I stop it shows the current pointer uh, positions okay um, that is pretty much it it's it's a fun gauge have a play um, I wouldn't spend hours slewing the map in real time while it looks great zipping all over the planet um, it's trying to load an awful lot of scenery while you're doing this um, obviously when you stop it's going to start loading that scenery but if you slew around the whole planet for a considerable amount of time uh, FSX will attempt to load all that scenery and will eventually run out of memory um, that's not something that uh, I can prevent unfortunately that's just a limitation of the flight simulation so to help avoid that try and take the lock off position your cursors and then move your aeroplane and that will stop the real-time scrolling now if you just want to move around a little bit on the zoom mode and leave that locked then I don't see a problem with that you can just move your scrolling a fraction just get off the coast And when you start, it'll throw you up 3,000 feet as well. So that's it. Um, have fun. I hope you enjoyed this gauge. I enjoyed making it and playing with it. And I'm going to be using it an awful lot. As I said, it opens up so many more possibilities. You can just pick somewhere completely random. You think, oh, well, I've never flown over this mountain range before. Um, yeah, let's try a bit south America. Just pick somewhere completely at random. Zoom in. Oh, look, there's a lake up there. Let's have a look, see what that's all about. And fly. And there we are. As I said, it's great for exploring. Um, if you're one of these people that just flies around in the same place um, everywhere, then um, have a bash at this and uh, it gets you out and flying new, new places. I, I come across um, an amazing place in the southwestern tip of New Zealand. It's absolutely beautiful to fly through the fields there. Um, and if it wasn't for something like this, I just wouldn't discover these other places to, uh, to fly and save. So I hope you enjoyed that. I uh, hope you found it useful. Um, please check out my other videos. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Bye for now.